This tutorial looks at how to create and upload skins to the Space Virtual World platform. To follow this tutorial, you need to have installed Unity. You need to have registered at the curator.sign.space website, and you need to have installed the Space Editor Pack. And when you've done that, you should have the Space Menu item in your Unity project in the top menu bar here. So, Skins are a clothing virtual good type. Uh, you can create them for the native uh, space avatar model, male and female, uh, or you can create them for other third party skeletons and models that we support. Uh, I'm going to focus on the uh, space uh, native model here, but I'll also highlight the differences if you're working with uh, a different model. So the, um, uh, so the first thing I want to do is to put a preview uh, model in here that I in this empty scene that I have. So uh, in the editor pack, uh, there is the space uh, models uh, um, available. So I'm going to go to female 2015, which is the latest one. You can see I have searched in the project for female 2015. And there's an object here which I can drag into the scene just by grabbing it and dragging it across and I'm going to set its position to 0, 0, 0, and then I'm going to click uh, F, oops, here. And now you can see this is our native model uh, with a, um, a generic skin on it. And so I can look at that skin here. If I drill down into the object, I can see it has a child object, and that has a child object itself called female body uh, inside the, uh, the model. And there I've got a skin mesh renderer, and on that I've got a material. And the material here, when I click on it in the inspector on the right-hand side, the material is in this materials uh, field. It's called female texture new. And uh, when I click it, it highlights in the project file. And I can click on this now. And I can see that the material itself has um, a texture and a shader. Um, the texture is visible here, female texture new. And um, if I click on this bottom bar, I can see the texture itself. Uh, and so this texture is a 2048 by 2048 um, uh, uh, file. If I right click on the object in the project uh, window here, I can actually see it in Explorer and I can see it's a Photoshop file, and I can actually open it in Photoshop and see that it is a, um, uh, uh, an editable object. So I can paint over this, or I can recolor it, I can add whatever details I want to, um, or I can just use it as a template to start uh, afresh doing my own uh, completely original work. You can see uh, in Photoshop here, in fact, uh, I have uh, started building some layers of my own on top of this. So I've got uh, a variation that I have created here, which is um, darker skinned and has uh, green eyes instead of uh, instead of blue eyes, and that's just something I'm going to uh, use as a variation to show uh, how to preview it and then upload it as a virtual good. I've got my own folder here called Skin in a folder that I've created, and I've got a skin called Female Skin, and this is that slightly darker uh, one with green eyes. And um, uh, when you import it, it will probably default to a um, compressed setting, uh, but you can come in and manually choose uh, what compression you want Unity to use, you want us to use when this is submitted to the virtual world. I'm going to use 16-bit because I want uh, uh, the, to retain as much of the quality as this, of this as I can. And so now what I want to do is uh, attach that to a material, and then I will be attaching that material to a virtual good component. So hovering over my folder here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a material here. Uh, and I'm going to name this um, suede female skin, because that's what I think it looks like. And uh, you can see here, by default, uh, the material is Unity's standard shader. Now, when you're creating skins in for the space virtual world, you can use whatever shaders you want. You can 
write your own shaders. Uh, you can use the um, you st standard Unity ones. You can use custom ones that you buy from the uh, asset store or other creators. Um, but going back to this um, original one, here you can see we're actually using a specific shader called Sine Wave Skin Unified Clothing and Skin. So I'm going to start off with that, which is a custom shader we have written uh, that you can draw on, and it's a good place um, to start. So I'm going to change this in the new material that I've created away from standard in the inspector. I'm going to move away from standard down to Sine Wave Skin Unified Clothing Skin. And you can see this is uh, a shader that we've created that has a load of very specific um, uh, settings which hopefully will allow you to do really uh, precise work trying to get whatever naturalistic or slightly um, um, uh, designed uh, skin look and feel that you want. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag my texture into there. And then if I wanted to, I could... Um, add a specular map, a normal map. Uh, what I'm going to do is just adjust the smoothness down a little bit just to show uh, the difference that that makes. You can see it makes it more matte, more suede, which is kind of the look that I'm going for. And um, so now uh, I want to be able to preview this in the scene. So I'm going to grab my female body here, the child of the female model. Uh, and I'm just going to drag this new material that I've created, Suede Female Skin, from the project uh, window into the um, materials window that I have here, replacing the standard one. And so now you can see my preview model here has that slightly matte skin look and the green eyes that I created. And in fact, I actually think that's a little bit too matte. So I'm going to adjust this back up to, say, uh, 0.35. Uh, okay, so that allows me to preview it on the model and obviously um, if I actually make this a Photoshop file then uh, I can make live adjustments in Photoshop and then just save out in Photoshop. It will automatically update here through the material and onto the model here so I can edit live toggling back and forwards. Now I'm happy with it though, I want to upload it as a virtual good item. So in the uh, project, in the scene hierarchy here, I'm going to click on create and I'm going to create empty, uh, which creates an empty object, as you can see. And I'm going to call this suede skin female. And I'm going to be adding two components to it. So in the inspector on the right hand side, I'm going to click add component. And the first thing I'm going to add is the clothing script. So I type in clothing just to search and we've got make clothing or attachment. I click on that. If you've watched any of our other clothing tutorials you should be familiar with this um, uh, component if you've looked at uploading attachments or, or um, jackets or boots or whatever. Uh, here I'm going to tick just one of the slots which is the skin base. Uh, you can see now the actual object uh, appears in the scene. And if I just move this to 0, 0, and 1, say, uh, you can see that this is a completely separate object. It has no direct relationship with the preview image that I've been using here. It's not rendering the skin because there's no mesh render on it, uh, but it's allowing me to set these virtual world parameters, uh, and then I'll also be adding the virtual good script itself so I can upload it. Now, um, the next thing I want to tick for this object is the skin setup here in the inspector. As I scroll down the clothing item uh, script, uh, skin setup only contains skin. Now I'm going to tick that and I'm sure that that's the ordinary um, uh, uh, setting that most users creating skills, sorry, creating skins uh, will, will use. Uh, it may be that you're creating essentially a compound virtual good that might be, a, for instance, a zombie uh, outfit where it's a head that has mesh components on it and a skin so that you can have sort of dead looking flesh and exposed flesh, whatever it may be. So you can do a compound of skin and other um, uh, mesh based components all as one clothing item. Uh, but in this case, it's just a, a, a skin, 
on its own. And by ticking this, I'm removing a whole load of features that relate to skinning and weighting um, uh, mesh-based objects. So I don't need to worry about any of that. All I need to do is attach the material uh, that you saw me create uh, to this, and I attach that in the replacement skin uh, section here at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of the component. And uh, I do that by saying uh, a number in here now. Those of you who are familiar with other platforms, uh, you might uh, know that the OpenSIM um, uh, model, for example, has three textures that you use to, um, uh, to build the full body skin. So if I was using the OpenSIM model, I'd put three in here, and you can see that creates three elements, and I'd be dragging the head uh, texture here, the body texture here, and the leg texture here. Um, as it is, and other, other models may have uh, even more or only two, uh, as it is ours, our native one only has one, so I only need one material with one texture attached. That's the one you saw me create, which covers the whole body, and that was suede female skin. So I'm going to drag that in there. And now all I need to do is add the uh, virtual goods component. Um, again, if you've followed almost any of our other tutorials, uh, you'll probably be familiar with this. Uh, already, so uh, this is the productization, as it were, of the of the uh, of the good. So it is a clothing item. It is um, female um, suede skin. Uh, the brand uh, is just ours. Um, remember, you can use this brand uh, field here to, to, to separate out different uh, collections of virtual goods. And then if you watch our vending machine tutorials, you'll see that there's a particular type of vending machine you can put in your region. Um, and, uh, and that will only display a particular brand collection. Uh, so that's what this field is for. Uh, I've got an icon that I'm going to drag in. This is the store preview image, um, and I'm actually going to use the same one, uh, which will be compressed by the system. Uh, so the store preview image is a PNG file, for 430 by 430, um, and it has the you know just the name of the product there. Um, uh, if you want a different icon to appear in the user's inventory. You can add it here as a 96 by 96, or the system will automatically crush this one down for me. Um, and uh, I'm going to leave it as for sale. It's not obscene, so I can just leave it as um, open for everybody. Uh, the developer name here, as distinct from the brand, uh, is the legal entity that owns the account. So that's you, whether that's a company or a private individual, that's the owner of the account submitting the virtual good. So I'm going to say sign wave entertainment here. Uh, and the copyright is ours as well. And uh, the category uh, I can pick from here is clothes, uh, body. Actually, it's not showing uh, skin there, but it should do uh, for you. Uh, so I'm just going to type that in here, clothes, body, skin. And so that is now ready for me to submit. Um, the, uh, the submission button is grayed out because as with other tutorials, I'm still uh, editing a version in the scene hierarchy here. Uh, all I need to do is drag this object into the project. So I'm grabbing the object, click and hold from the scene hierarchy here and dragging it across into a folder in the project uh, uh, window here. And now you can see I have the same settings all uh, applied and the submit button is live. So I press submit and click to upload the item. And because it's uh, relatively small, it should spin through pretty quickly. Um, we'll see it's uh, only three meg and it's uploading very fast. So that will only take a couple of minutes to process on the server. Then I should get an email telling me that it's available for me to view in world. So I go to the creator.sign.space uh, website and log in with my account. It will be in my inventory and I can also see it in the store as it will be previewed. And then at curator.sign.space I can click the submit button to push it to the live servers uh, to go on sale. Uh, before I show you the results in World, I'll also very quickly just touch upon some alternatives, uh, thinking about other shaders. So, um, so that uh, 
um, custom shader that we have created, which you can play with here on all these settings. You can um, modify in the, uh, you, you can see the, the um, documentation for on the wiki. Um, uh, specific details on these, uh, but this is really something we've designed for trying to get a realistic uh, skin tone that you know the, the appropriate level of shininess and uh, and and, um, and glow. Uh, obviously, you may want to do fantastical stuff, science fiction, or fantasy-based uh, stuff, and so if you're doing that. Uh, you can do really anything you want. There's no limit to the shaders that you can use. You can, as I say, you can write your own. You can create holographic shaders. You can create highly metallic shaders. Uh, so I'm just going to show you a very simple example here of something I've done. I'm certainly not a, an artist by any means, uh, but this just gives you an example. So I'm going to come back to my preview model here. I've highlighted the female body component inside uh, where I've still got the suede skin on there. I'm going to drag this female skin blue flash on to the uh, materials slot here on the inspector. And so you can see now I've got something that's slightly more fantastical. I've got a sort of gray, silver gray uh, character with a, a sort of um, a glam rock star over the eye and, um, and very bright eyes. And if I look at that material uh, you can see here, obviously, I've got another version of that texture, uh, which, again, I created in uh, Photoshop here, just black and white, kept the eye blue and put that uh, uh, splash over the face. What I've also done is I've added an emission map uh, here. And if we look at the emission map, you can see this is basically black except the eye. Now, again, I've created this in Photoshop. So you can see I've just isolated the eye and the rest is all black. And what that means, black means no emission at all. So the rest of the entire skin emits nothing. Uh, but the eyes themselves effectively look like a light source. They have a certain glow um, uh, and don't uh, take shadows. So they will shine out even in uh, dark environments. And so... Um, that's just a look and feel I've created myself by starting to fiddle with these. You can do all sorts of other things, making the skin look more uh, sort of metallic. You can get a chrome look. Uh, you can vary this so that you can change the, the color of the skin as well. You can create gold avatars, whatever you want to do. Um, but um, uh, and, and then obviously you can also, as I say, start creating your own uh, custom shaders if, uh, if you uh, have the interest in, in, in doing that. So that's how to submit skins as virtual good items to the Space Virtual World platform.